Hello, I'm Mark Hilliard from Beyond 20, and today I want to talk a little bit about uh, reporting and child objects. Frequently, we are asked if there's a way to include things like journals, uh, tasks, approvals uh, in a report. And uh, yes, the, the, the short answer is absolutely. Um, the way that you do that is actually through the report designer. Um, I have a built report here, uh, and this actually has to do with the CMDB. Uh, the report is to show, a, show me anything, basically any CMDB record that has been updated and audited in the last month. So, for instance, any changes made to the CMDB record would be, uh, would be recorded in a history journal. And so my search is going to look for that. Um, so what we do is we pull up the report manager. And you can see I have my CMDB audit report already built, but let's take a look at what that looks like. Uh, first, we'll go to the properties. I'll show you the search that I used here, new journals within the last month. Um, created this, created this report, uh, this search. Um, so what we're doing here is we're using a relationship clause or related clause, and you can get that by clicking on the drop down next to the new button. You'll see there's a related clause. Uh, it's great out here because I already have one. Um, but uh, you can use that for things like this. Uh, down below, uh, you'll see what we're looking for. Uh, basically, there's at least one journal where uh, the type is history, and those are what we use for audits in Sherwell. Um, and then the created date time of that journal is within the last month, so I'm limiting this down to, uh, by date. Uh, so once you've done that and you have your search, um, I don't have any calculated fields on this report, so it's fairly straightforward. Um, then we went ahead and we designed the report. So I'll go ahead and pull up my report designer. Let's take a moment. You'll see I've already formatted this uh, as well. Um, eh, my title is not great, but... Um, so what we've got here uh, is we've got several bands. Uh, of course, our title band, uh, in this case, let's go ahead and fix this. Uh, let's call it CMDB Audit Report Monthly, something like that. Um, I don't have a columns in mind because I've decided that what I really want is information out of the journals, and some of those fields are long text fields, and columns don't really... Uh, aesthetically work well with column uh, with with long text so I haven't put anything in that band and I've just collapsed it down um, which you can do uh, by holding these by holding and dragging these handles on the left so if I wanted to expand that column header band I could go select the handle of the band below it and drag it out and then of course that gets larger uh, my next of course is my uh, header and I'm grouping everything by configuration item type so you know config computer, config, printer, config, server. Um, so that's my grouping header. And then finally my detail band. And really all I'm getting in there is uh, a description and a unique identifier uh, for, my, for my configuration item. And that's all that's going to show up uh, as part of the actual configuration item record. And this is being run against config item, uh, the entire group, so I get all my configuration item members. Uh, below that, my detail report, you'll see again, I have no information, so I don't have any further, uh, any further stuff for the config item. But the next one down is what I really want to see. Um, this is, um, oh, I apologize, that is the band. Um, this is the relationship that I'm building against. So config item group links journals. Um, and that is going to bring in any related journal for the detailed asset or detailed CI from the CMDB. Um, and you'll see I just have a detail band. Now the way you add those is you simply go up into the band that you want to insert it or inject it into. In this case it would be in my detail band for the config item. Uh, you can right click and you'll see insert detail report. Now you also have a way of inserting new bands, margins, group headers, so on and so forth, but in this case in order to get the child objects basically step through children and bring that data into this report you want to insert a detailed report. And what you'll see is all of the possible 
relationships that exist in Surewell for that particular record type. Uh, in this case, again, I used uh, journals. Um, and there it is right there. That's the relationship that I ins inserted. So configuration item group links journals. Um, once I've done that, I get this detail band down here, and I can then add data to it. Now, I've added all my data by simply dragging fields that I want to utilize. And you'll see also over here uh, on the right side of the screen, go ahead and widen that out, that when I select the band that has the relationship, that relationship is automatically selected in my field list so that if I expand that out, these are the fields I have access to for the journals that are being added to the report. Uh, so all I have to do in order to add a data, data, say a data element to the report is I can just drag the field over. So, you know, I wanted who it was created by, so I can just take created by and drag it onto the report and then format it to fit my report style. Once you've done that, uh, again, you format your report. Um, in my case, again, I didn't use columns, I used rows because you know, if the field, if the details field, for instance, changed, uh, or a description field changed, or something, something with a lot of text in it changed, I want to have that space to include it. Um, I know when you run the the report wizard, oftentimes you you know you get back columns, and some of those columns are super narrow, and they don't really hold your text or your data very well. Uh, so in a case like this, I would use rows instead of columns in order to uh, establish the information around that audit record. Now. Uh, this again has been uh, pre-configured, so I've got you know my colors and my fonts and everything the way I want them. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and preview it, and you'll get to see what it looks like or what it would look like once the data comes in by clicking on the preview button. One small side note here: um, the preview button will not load all of the data. Uh, your preview button uh, li li limits the size of the data set that it will load. Um, I've had this question before you know, when a, a customer or someone was, was trying to build a report and they were like, well, I'm not seeing all the records when I preview it. That is true. Not all the records are going to load if it, if it gets past a certain point. I actually don't know this, the, the actual size, but there is a size limit on the report preview. So keep in mind that this data that's coming through the preview may not be the entire data set that you're going to get when you run the report. Uh, so you see here again, I've got my title, I have my configuration item type name showing up here in my first band. Uh, I have my asset information here, there's the name of my asset, uh, there's my unique identifier. And then as you can see, we keep moving down through this, you can see here is my first journal entry. Again, this happened Thursday, August 3rd. Uh, the field name that was changed was the owned by team. Uh, it was blank and now it is owned by the help desk. Um, so you can see and then, of course, all of, these, uh, all of these records will show up one by one within that primary asset uh, group. So audiovisual, here's the asset, here's all the, or the CI record, and here are all of the audit journals within the last month. You'll also notice that um, I've done a little bit of window and orphan protection, so my header will always show up at the top of a page. Uh, no matter how long the data set is, um, I will leave a gap at the end of a page in order to avoid orphaning the title for the next one. And you can see we just go through all of the different changes that have happened uh, within the last month. So this can be very helpful, uh, again, if you're looking for audit logs or if you're looking to report against approvals or tasks in an incident or a change, um, you know, things like that. Uh, you can build these detail reports against relationships uh, with the primary record uh, being reported against. So uh, once we're done with all that, we can go ahead and close the report and save it. And then we can just run it. Double click right on the report and there it is. Uh, from here I could export, uh, I could send it off in an email, uh, I could simply print it out. I can also, of course, schedule this report to be run. All of those things are possible. Um, so uh, if you like what you see here, feel free to uh, give, it a, give it a try. If you have any questions, please reach out to us. Uh, you can reach us by, via Twitter, at Beyond20LLC. Uh, you can visit our webpage at www.beyond20.com and uh, reach out to contact us. Um, or you can join, and we do, uh, we do encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Beyond20LLC.
Thank you. Thank you.